Good morning. Good morning. Um, for those of you who have not had the pleasure of meeting yet, um, my name is Camille Mayberry. Um, my husband, Michael, and I have seven kids, and we've been um, involved in this church family and serving here for the past four or five years. You should also know that the last time I stood here was last May at Michael's funeral. And what I'm about to say about Michael is not because he was a powerful man, but because he served a powerful God. See, when I stood here, this room was full, absolutely capacity. Not because my introverted, quiet, back of the room husband was an eloquent speaker or a prime evangelist. but because his life had been transformed by submitting himself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that he chose deliberately to remember that, to remember that he was unworthy. And in that, know that God's ways are higher. And so he came into everything that he did, not big things, but little things daily, with a predetermined yes. So as God led him throughout his life and instructed him, Michael, go to seminary. He didn't know why, but he said yes. Work for this nonprofit. You can trust that you'll always have everything you need. Yes. Trust me to build your family the way that I will be most glorified. Yes. So not always easy yeses. But he already determined that's what his answer would be because he knew that God would be most glorified in submission to God's will, not his. Lead Bible study. Okay. Go to Belize. Okay, not always knowing why, certainly feeling out of his element, but trusting that if God asked him to do it, then it would be worth saying yes. And his last yes, take the gospel to the people of Belize who don't know you and make disciples there. So we were in the preliminary stages of moving our family to Belize. There are lots of reasons why these yeses don't make sense to the world. But everything God does is to bring glory and honor to him, not to us. There is only one kingdom to be built. So he remembered who he was, and he knew that God could do it. Not because of who he was, in spite of who he was, in spite of who we are. He's not enough. I'm certainly not enough. And the reality is, neither are you. <laughs> but God is enough. And he brings glory to himself and builds his kingdom through broken vessels and introverted people who would rather stay at the back and not lead the Bible study or stand up and preach or move his family with seven kids to Belize. But that's where God gets the glory. So what does that mean for us? If somebody like Michael, who by the world's standards was just a regular man, and he is just a regular man. 
can impact so many people in the little things over a cup of coffee, over a phone call. Nothing seemingly significant, yet God was in it because God asked him to do it, and he came already deciding it would be yes. So if we're really looking to make a lasting impact ourselves, then I think Romans 12, 2 is fitting, and God has reiterated that to me repeatedly. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the first part of it. And a lot of times I think that we interpret that as, um, well, we choose not to align ourselves with the things that the world values. And while, yes, that's true, I think that's a partial understanding of what Paul was telling us here. Because when you actually look at the words themselves, it has more to do with allowing the Holy Spirit to change your character that then informs your action and aligns it with God's mind. And it even speaks to our purpose, not just our thoughts about how we are to be or our feelings about how we're to be, but our purpose. So if we know that God's ways are higher than ours, and we know that he's doing a new thing amongst us, an unprecedented thing that we have not seen or experienced in our time, then what we need is to remember that we are not enough. And remember that God is the one with the answers, not us. And so just as our staff has encouraged us and they themselves have humbled themselves before the Lord, seeking his will, that's what we're supposed to do. That's not just their job. They are servant leaders. They are demonstrating to us that we are to come before the Lord with humility. And sometimes we think, well, I'm not living in blatant sin, and hopefully we're not, but regardless of what it is, it's to come before the Lord with an openness and ask him to show us, because sometimes there's even sin that we don't even know, that we're not aware of, that our eyes have been veiled to, control, pride. I don't know. It can be any number of things, and that's what God will show you. But we have to first recognize that we're unworthy. That's why we need a Savior. Thank God for our Savior. Jesus himself told us that we're supposed to love God and love other people. That's not easy. But if we come with a predetermined, yes, Lord, I will submit myself to your will, and we allow our minds to be renewed, then the second part of that verse is, then you will be able to test and improve and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will, to discern what it is God wants us to do. Romans chapter 8. We have an obligation to live under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That's not optional. God exists to glorify himself, not us. So as collectively we seek God's direction, and I hope that you will, I hope you recognize that that's a privilege. May we humble ourselves. May we trust that the Holy Spirit can help us to love each other and love the people who do not yet know him in a power that is God's, not ours, because we don't have what it takes. 
And when you can get to the place where you submit yourself to the Lord and your answer's already yes, it's actually rather freeing because you don't have to sit there and deliberate about, God, am I going to answer you or not? You just already know your answer's yes. And you know that it's not going to be you who does glorious things. It's not going to be you. But you have to first submit yourself and you have to first humble yourself daily, walking with him daily. So as we try to determine, discern rather, what it is God wants us to do to really make an impact on the people around us who are here today and who aren't, wherever we are, as we're going, whether it's to work or whether it's to Belize. God doesn't need our ideas. He doesn't need our good intentions. All he wants is our submission and our humble yes.